Everybody, welcome to Scotland. Lighting's odd here. There's a light dead over my head, so I got some funky shadows on me. Okay, but we just got in to Edinburgh. We just got here. We checked into the hotel room, and it's a really nice room. Let's uh, give you a quick walkthrough so you can see what the room looked like. So let's start over here. Let's go ahead and see which way we're going here. We have a room here. Nice room. Yeah, got a nice bedroom here. A nice view outside, out of the windows here. View overlooking the city. Leading into the restroom here. Coming out of this room. Uh -oh. We have another restroom here. And here's another bedroom here. And again, it's a really nice view. Lights off in here, but a really nice view of the city, overlooking the city here. So coming around. Should okay. So we got kids in here. This is great because they love it. Because this room has bunk beds, and they all want to be in the top. They all want to be in the top bunk. So we're gonna have to work that out. But around to the kitchen. It's a nice kitchen area here. So again, this is right off of the Royal Mile uh, into the living room, the dining area here. So this is a really great location. This is so great because we'll be able to walk out of here, literally walk up the street and go right to Edinburgh Castle. There's that view. You know, just kind of see the city center here. So. So yeah, this is what we got. Just a really nice room. Um, I think we're gonna enjoy it here. You can hear people are kind of riled up. <laughs> a long day, it took us six hours to get here today. So it's a good long drive. But I think we will uh, have a great week up here in Scotland. Looking forward to it. So the entrance to this hotel room is really more of an apartment, but the entrance is down a close and it's gated. It's really great. I'll show it to you when we go out so you can see what that looks like. I won't say that it's easy, but it's always fun traveling with our kids. And Edinburgh is a beautiful city, one that we really enjoyed and have fun time and a wonderful experience. The kids enjoyed it. It's a beautiful, clean city and everything functions really well. It's well put together and the people are really, really friendly. So if you get the opportunity, definitely go up to Edinburgh. It is one of the places you really should put on your bucket list if you've never been. So today is our last day in Edinburgh. We're heading out in the morning and we can only get booked to see Edinburgh Castle today. It's Thursday. There are a lot of people in the city. We've been here for three days. We hadn't noticed as many people, maybe because we're heading towards the weekend, but the city has a, an alive and festive vibe to it today. It's really nice. So we're walking right now up the Royal Mile to Edinburgh Castle for our tour, which we booked a couple of days ago. And we will continue the fight for democracy. Thank you very much. Part of the band. Oh, it's like it's going to be a good thing. Oh, it's like So, all your tickets are going to be booked online. 
you had definitely have to have tickets to get into this location. It took us three days to get tickets to get everyone in. So there's everything's digital. It's contactless. So if you go to the ticket counter, if you have kids, they'll hand you one of these which is a nice pamphlet and it describes different aspects of Castle and it's really interactive. You kind of get kids and young people more involved in it so it's not just us old people walking around. The young ones can kind of enjoy it as well. It's a nice little handout. In normal times, Edinburgh gets 3.6 million visitors a year, but due to COVID restrictions, there's a lot of caps on capacity and it allowed us to be able to tour the castle with not having a lot of other visitors there. We really enjoyed our day because there were not a lot of people crowding up the space we could see and really take our time and walk around the castle. If you get a chance to go before things really open up again, it'll be a wonderful opportunity and you'll be able to really enjoy it. So we just walked through the Scottish War Memorial, but inside it says no filming, and there's a wonderful memorial, monuments really, to uh, soldiers lost in wars throughout Scottish history, and it supported the British Kingdom. So it's really, really nice, but there's no filming in there, but if you get an opportunity to walk through it, it's, it's nice, it's solemn, it uh, covers the history, and pays memorial to those who fell in, in battle. So another key thing about touring this castle is that I love the fact that they have benches set up all around because you take the time to walk up here and it's a good walk, it's a good hike up here. Not that it necessarily makes you tired, but once you get here, you do want to take your time and walk through it and really explore and explore the site. And it's, it's so wonderfully provisioned and taken care of that you don't want to rush through it. So we walk, we'll view a little bit, we'll see a bench, we'll sit down and we'll just kind of, you know, Look at what's there right now, we're in the courtyard. And we're just gonna sit here for a little bit, relax, and then we'll continue on. Uh, we went through the War Memorial, next we're gonna walk through the Great Hall, and then we'll probably end up with uh, looking at the, I believe it's the Crown Jewels. Right now my kids are looking for unicorns. I believe the unicorns were on the crest of the royal family. So uh, this goes back to that, that pamphlet, the, the little activity handout that I mentioned a little earlier about giving the kids the handouts. And so that allows them to kind of get brought into the overall experience. And now they're looking for the different unicorns just scattered across the castle here. And so that's really wonderful. Edinburgh Castle is really beautiful, but to really enjoy it, you have to come see it for yourself. The crown jewels, you can't, you can't photograph the crown jewels, nor can you photograph the war memorial. So much of the exhibits, you can't photograph. There's a lot to see, and I can show you a lot, but if you want to see the best of it, you have to kind of make it here yourself. We visit a lot of ruins, a lot of destroyed and torn down castles and remnants. It is really wonderful on occasion to be able to go through castles that are well maintained, that still have the same amount of history. Edinburgh, the city itself, has a wonderful history, is a beautiful city, and is a wonderful place to walk around. The closes are really interesting. They're beautiful in the daylight, they're scary in the dark. So Edinburgh is a beautiful city. It is a beautiful city, but 
as the sun starts to set, the city does begin to take on a bit more of a mysterious feel to it. I could definitely see why they run the, uh, why the city has the ghost tours at night. As you pass the closes, they kind of start to look a bit dim. The city gets a little dark. I think it's that gothic architecture that begins to take on more of a mysterious look. I'm gonna walk around a little bit tonight just so you can kind of see a little bit of what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, take a look at the Royal Mile Market. So one of the most interesting things about Edinburgh is that they have closes, which in other cities you probably call them alleys. But these are really narrow, dark, they get really spooky at night. Let's go to town a couple of them and let's just see what I'm talking about. Edinburgh is a unique city and the closes exemplify how unique the city really is. As you walk down the closes, you can begin to feel the walls kind of closing in around you, especially as it gets darker. And you can imagine a Scottish version of Jack the Ripper jumping out or a crackhead, either one. You don't want to bump into them. It takes a bit of fortitude to turn around and just walk down these closes in the dark. You don't know where they're going to pop out at, but you trust that the city is safe. At the same time, it is a nice way to get a little thrill and a wonderful feel for the city. I do acknowledge that I was walking around Edinburgh in the middle of summer when the days are long and it doesn't get dark till 11 o'clock at night. I can also think about and imagine what it must feel like to walk down these closes when the days are short in the middle of the winter when it's cold and windy and very, very dark. As you're near the end of the close and you can see the street ahead, every step becomes lighter Every step, you feel a little better. You feel a little safer. Jack the Ripper, the Scottish version, begins to recede into your thoughts. And you come back to reality. And you realize, all you do is walk down the alley. It's not that serious. So in the day or the night, you have to be in good shape if you want to walk around this city. It is all hills, all up and down. All right, this one. So if there was ever a close that had an eerie name, it would be this one. Yeah, we're not gonna walk down that one. We're gonna leave the flesh market closed alone. What do you think? Yep. Nah, we're not walking down that one. But I can definitely see how they run uh, ghost tours here at night and hunted events. I mean, these closes look pretty spooky. So the Royal Mile really is impressive and it's really great if you get an opportunity to come out at night. You don't have all the tourists around, it's a little less, it's a lot less busy, but it's well lit so you can still see. Uh, the temperature's good tonight, nice and warm <laughs> for Scotland. There's something about being out at night that is exhilarating. We decided to walk all the way up to Edinburgh Castle to see how it looks at night. Luckily for us, the castle is well lit and it really is beautiful, even at night. I would say it looks even better at night than it does in the daylight. As someone who enjoys going out at night and doing walks, this was a wonderful part of our overall Edinburgh experience and Scotland experience.
Although I'm pretty bold, I couldn't bring myself to walk down more than one or two of the closes at night. It's a wonderful experience, but at the same time, it can be a bit claustrophobic and somewhat overwhelming, especially if you're walking around in a city that you're not familiar with and that you don't know. But as the night does settle in, the city does get dark and somewhat foreboding. So walking around Edinburgh at night is really nice. It's a beautiful city, but you do stare into the corners, the dark corners, a little harder. You are looking a little deeper down the closes. I mean, seriously, would you walk down this one? I mean, you can go ahead and go down there, but I won't. But just joking, a lot of closes have shops down them. You could go shopping, the stores, their eateries. Uh, there's a lot of food tucked off, tucked away. So it's, it's worth going and exploring them. I'm just having a little fun. So that ends our night tour of Edinburgh, up and down the Royal Mile. Again, beautiful city. You get a chance, come out here. Just enjoy it. It's pretty. It's really nice. Blair, what do you think? Yep, lovely. That's a good one. I give Edinburgh A plus. As someone who loves to travel, I can say that Edinburgh is a unique city, beautiful and mysterious. Everyone should visit at least once.